it is just after six o'clock. So why don't we go ahead and jump into this? We have about 25 people with us and more joining as we speak, um, but we'll go ahead if that's okay with everyone. Um, welcome uh, to Caring with Melanie. Uh, I'm Lisa with Dementia Alliance of North Carolina, and we're so glad to have everybody back from last time and a lot of new faces this session too. Um, tonight we are going to be talking about aggression and resistance when caring for our loved ones with dementia. And I know that's a very important topic for lots of us on there. So uh, please do feel free as we're going along to put your questions into the chat. And Melanie will try and uh, touch on as many of those as she can. She will ask you to do some thumbs up and things like that. So make sure you can find that chat box on there, probably at the bottom of your screen, the reaction button, uh, and see if you can click on the reaction button and give us a wave or a high five. Uh, see if that works for you. And um, Natalie's got it. Thank you, Nat. And I uh, just wanted to quickly thank our sponsors for this go around. Uh, we have four sponsors this time, Gallbirth Health and Acadia, Aware Senior Care and ESI. And we wanna thank all of our sponsors for these sessions. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Melanie Bunn, our dementia training nurse extraordinaire. And we can just jump right in with the conversation. So Melanie, welcome and thank you. And we're excited to hear what you have to say. Oh, and, and thanks for inviting me back. I'm kind of one of the, the biggest compliments for someone who makes her living basically running her mouth um, is to be invited back to run your mouth more. And so um, I, I take this as quite an honor to, um, every time I'm invited to be with Dementia Alliance, um, they have a special, special, special place in my heart. Um, and I'm excited to see it growing so more people are in different parts of the, the country are coming to cherish them the way I do. And so I want to thank um, the people who have dropped in where they're from. I know a lot of people have joined since we asked for that. So we've got people from California and different places in North Carolina. But if you could drop into the chat where you're from, that kind of helps me know what time zone you might be in, what time of day it might be where you are. If I should be jealous that, you know, it's gorgeous in the Bay Area of California and, and you know, not sure what it's like in North Carolina, I mean, in New York or, or Virginia, but I've got Carrie down. So um, thanks to everybody for being here. And so this topic today, I kind of did a little editing with the topic and and Lisa, I, I think will still not be mad at me because I just added a little bit of a question. And, and what I said was, um, and I'm hoping that you can see my slides. I'm going to look for Lisa to give me a thumbs up or Anne, I can see, um, Ginger, um, that you can see my slides. And it's aggression or resistance or something else might it be something else that we're really looking at or thinking about and what i think often what we call aggression and resistance and hopefully you'll buy it with me by the end of this conversation um to start to think about it as as maybe it is something else and so we're gonna kind of talk about that and see um where we wind up. So I am a person who I am a very curious person. So when someone calls me and tells me something like, oh, this person is being aggressive or this person is resisting care, I get really curious about what are, what are we talking about? Because if I say aggressive or resistance, it might mean something to one person and it might be something completely different to someone else. So I really want to know what happened. So I'm gonna stop sharing at this point. I'm gonna ask you to drop into the chat. If you were to call me and to say, 
oh, my person was being aggressive or my person was being resistant. What kind of thing might you be talking about? So just drop it in the chat. I'm talking about my person, whether it's a family member or whether it's your resident or whether it's a client or a participant, my person is being aggressive. What kinds of thing or, or resistive, what kinds of things are you talking about? So I'm gonna give you a second. I hope people are chatting away. Refusing a shower is, is something um, that someone put down. The person won't take a shower. Um, somebody else put down kicking and hitting and biting and won't let me do their, their activities of daily living, won't let me do their personal care. Um, somebody put in there not wanting to use the, bat, we use the restroom. Getting out of bed in the morning is something. Um, physical help or socializing, anger and yelling, um, resist arguing, saying you don't understand them, they don't understand you. Um, asking my person to do something more than once and they start yelling. Oh, so this is starting to um, look more clear. They won't take their medicines. They won't hold on. They're holding on to the chair rest. Um, and so I'm guessing that means that then you can't get them up to do. So it seems like to me what we're talking about, generally speaking, really angry and a mean look and um, accuses people of doing bad things, doing something and they don't want to share. Well, so, so it sounds like what we're talking about is there's a disconnect between what we want and, and what they are doing. And so we might change that around a little bit and say what we want and what they need or what we need and what they want. So there's some kind of a disconnect between expectations and actions. Does that sound kind of fair? We've got things in here won't let me organize. Um, aggressive men looking at other people. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what we're talking about. So we're talking about we want something and it's not happening. So those are really helpful because now I know kind of what y'all are talking about. So what I get really curious about when people are call me and say he won't take his medications or he won't get out of bed or um, the person won't take a shower is I start thinking about what happened when you tried. Now, I'll give you one of my biases. And one of my biases is when we label something, we limit. And what I mean by that is when we put labels on something, we really kind of limit our ability to help. Because if I say this person is being sexually aggressive, well, I don't like sexually aggressive people. And that means I don't like you. So when we start to put labels on things, it kind of changes our relationship, our understanding, our, our ability to kind of connect and understand. So I get more specific about what happened than just a label. I want to know things like, when did it happen? And that might include things like the time of the day that it happened or did it happen out of the blue or could you kind of see it starting to build and that was the last just the 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 um the stick that broke the camel's back i want to know things like where did it happen where did this thing happen did it happen in the person's room or did it happen out in a common area did it happen when we were away from home or did it happen when we were at home who was around and who was involved. And then these last two, we're actually going to look at something um, to give us that perspective, because I'm going to show you a little video clip and it's just a few seconds. But I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you a little video clip. And I created this video clip because I got, a, I was getting a lot of phone calls at one point where what people would say to me is he just hit me right out of the blue. It just came right out of the blue. He just hit me or he hit another resident or he hit a staff person 
or he hit another family member or he hit somebody at church or she just hauled off and knocked the crap out of one of the ladies that she usually gets along with or she pushed somebody down. So I kind of did this little video. Now, the person who's in this video with me is my son. He does not have dementia, just in case anybody was worried. Um, he does not have dementia. Um, but this is what I saw one day. It's a reenactment of what I saw. And then I got a, see, see, he just does it right out of the blue. We were having a great day, nothing was wrong. And then all of a sudden he hit me just right out of the blue. So I'm gonna play the video. I'm hoping Lisa can give me a thumbs up that what you can see is just a black screen. Okay. And I'm gonna start it playing. Now I'm hoping what you can see now is the back of my house, my porch and my son's shoulder. All right, so let's see what happens. Oops, I wanted, I wanted to make one thing. When you, we're gonna watch it through three times because it's only seconds. We're gonna watch it through this first time. This first time, I just want you to watch it. Hey, Matthew. Hey, Matthew, hey. Oh, what? what? Oh, I'm sorry. And at that moment, he swung and hit her. Because you can kind of see it in his face, can't you? You can kind of see it at that moment, he swung and hit her. So that was the first time watching it through, just to kind of see what happened. So this time when you watch it through, I want you to watch it, looking at it from the perspective of the person who's approaching, uh, me, who's approaching Matthew. And I want you to think about it from my perspective. We've had a good day, things have gone well, I'm there to help Matthew. I'm there to help Matthew, maybe to give him some medications. I'm there to help him to take him to the shower. I'm there to help him to go do something fun. Let's go have some ice cream. I'm there to help him to say, you know, you haven't been to the bathroom in a while. You probably need to do that. I'm there to help him. So this time through, just watch what happens from my perspective. Hey, Matthew. Hey, Matthew, hey. Oh, what? what? Oh. And then he swings. So I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to um, ask you to think in about it from my perspective. I said, Matthew, and, and then I just touched him to let him know I was there. And now we're going to go do something. We're going to go to the bathroom or we're going to go get cleaned up or we're going to go have ice cream. Or, Here are your medications. So just drop into the chat or if you want to unmute and kind of tell me, has something ever happened like that to you out of the blue when you thought thing, there wasn't an actual hit? My son couldn't actually hit me. We I, he's, he just couldn't actually do it. So there wasn't actually hit. We're just pretending there was a hit in that moment when he turned around, that arm came up and he threw it. So someone says, yes, it's happened to me, plenty. So someone, um, you can drop it in the chat or if you want to unmute and tell us about a situation where something like that kind of sort of thing happened to you. Did, has anybody got a story where that happened? Um, and, and someone dropped the call, so we, she, Terry, didn't even see it. But we're going to watch it one more time, Terry, and you'll be able to see it the third time. So has something like that happened to you? Can you unmute and just tell us when something like that happened? Hi, this is Terry. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, yes. So I didn't see the video, but I have had something happen with my mother who does have um, cognitive impairment, dementia, mm -hmm. um, at night in her bedroom. We were going to bed and I didn't realize that it had been a big day for her with a lot of processing of information. And it was completely to me at that time, 
out of the blue because I didn't recognize anything going into the minute. But now um, that I'm learning more about dementia, um, now I understand that I could have seen signs if I knew what to look for beforehand. Okay. So from your perspective in that moment, and it was, it just, it was just out of the blue. We were doing fine. Nothing was wrong. Everything was going well. And then just all of a sudden the person hit me and someone says, my, my mom doesn't do physically, but maybe there are other ways I can tell that she's really, really upset. Someone said um, she went um, to wake a person who, and, and you were going to, Sarah was going to do something nice. She was going to take the person who was sleeping, probably not really tired, probably just kind of bored, not much going on. This is a fun thing. This person loves this person would be so mad at me if, if he or she didn't get to bingo and, and went to wake them up and sat up and just hit the person. Yeah. So it's scary and it's startling. And when it's a family member, it can be devastating it can be frightening it can be overwhelming it can be uh, seem unfair it can seem confusing what are some other words you might put in there if when that kind of thing happens whether it's someone physically hits you or whether it's somebody yells at you or somebody says something um that that um is is unkind or inappropriate um um, startling there's a shock factor the person grabbed you really hard so people can grab you hard enough to make bruises I had a lady who would pinch and twist and she never hit us but I tell you there were some times when I think it would have been I'd been better off if she had hit than the pinching and the twisting she did for some people so what other feelings Holly wrote down startling there's a shock factor what other feelings do you think might get involved with that kind of out of the blue, didn't expect it, never knew it was coming kind of thing? So just drop in some other feelings or unmute and say something. Um, empathy, it hurts emotionally for your feelings get hurt because you're just trying to take, you're just trying to help and these things happen and it gets really scary and uncomfortable. What just hit me is I know she spends a lot of time being confused and that kind of an action. And when she comes back, I'm confused and I'm frustrated because okay. it's not it's not something that I believe I've earned. OK, so it seems unfair. It's confusing. I mm -hmm. haven't done anything wrong and now I'm getting blamed when mm -hmm. it just came out of the blue. Sometimes it doesn't come out of the blue. Sometimes what it happens every time you try to help somebody in the shower, it just goes badly. You know, the person doesn't do well. The person starts pushing and hitting and scratching and biting and pinching, and it just doesn't go well. You've invaded their space. Um, so let's go back and look at it one more time. And we're gonna go back to hear and look at it one more time for some for somebody at least one person this is the first time seeing it um but hopefully lisa can you see the black screen again okay so this time as we look at it look at it not from the perspective of me as the care partner but look at it from the perspective of that person living with dementia hey matthew Matthew, hey. Oh, what? what? Oh. So when you look at it from the perspective of Matthew, the person living with dementia, mm -hmm. what might you think about looking at it from his perspective? What do you begin to pick up? He is surprised and he's not sure that it could be that whether it's bad or good. So he was surprised and he was startled. And what do you think happened in his brain at that moment when he was surprised and startled? Fear. He was afraid. Okay. So he was, a, he was afraid. And so in that moment, what was he really trying to do? Was he really trying to hurt her or was he really trying to protect himself? What do you think? I would say protect himself. Okay. 
So he was really trying to protect himself. So I'm going to go back to the slideshow. I'm moving to a little bit of a different place. We're gonna move from thinking about the what happened, because do you think if Matthew could describe this situation, do you think Matthew might describe it a little differently from how we described it? So do you think Matthew's going to say he was aggressive or he was resisting care, or do you think he might call it something else? And you can drop it in the chat. I'm uh, Lisa will share with me what you put in it. Do you think Matthew might say he was being aggressive or he was being res res um, resistant? Or do you think he might say it was something else? He was being defensive. Okay, so he's being defensive. He's trying to protect himself. What it was else? a natural reaction? It was a natural reaction. And that is exactly why. So I want, I was going to show this later. And I think I'm actually going to show it now. So And I might show it later too. So I want to show this slide. And the reason I want to show this slide is because it looks at some things that are going on in the brain. So if you look at this slide, this is what, these are PET scans. And PET scans are looking at the glucose in the brain, where the brain is working and where the brain is resting. And so you can understand these, where it's red is where the brain is working and where it's kind of purpley is where the brain is resting. Now, for me, it's red and purple. For you, it might look somewhat different, but I'm gonna show you this color right here across that arc on that top, on that bottom brain, that's red. And this kind of right in here, that's purple. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about red and purple. So if you look at this brain, this is the normal healthy brain. If you look at this brain, this is the brain with dementia. So just generally speaking, what you immediately notice is different. This is one part of the brain, the top row, the second row is a different part of the brain. What do you automatically notice is happening differently in those two parts of the brain? in those two parts of someone's life in the brain? What do you notice is happening different? A lot of resting. A lot of resting is what is what someone said out loud. Thank you for that. Yeah. And Lisa was gonna tell me what was in the chat. Sarah says the size is smaller and Holly says it's working less. There's less working going on. So the size is smaller and there's a lot less working going on. And, and all three of y'all, are absolutely spot on, exactly right with um, with what I see as well. So I'm gonna check in with Lisa. Lisa, can you see my cursor? I can, yes. Yeah, you should be able to see my cursor. That's one of the things I like about Zoom actually. So if you look right there, that is, everybody put your hand right here. Put your hand right here. This is your prefrontal cortex right across the front of your brain. This is the part of your brain that really doesn't start working until late teens to mid twenties. And it's got a lot of different um, um, roles that it plays. So if you look at the brain right here of this person who's a healthy person, and then you look at the brain right here of the person who is living with early dementia, what do you notice is the difference? What do you notice is the difference? No, it it's red not working as much. It is absolutely not working as much. So we need to figure out what is happening there. So put your hand right here. It does lots and lots of different things. We're only gonna talk about the couple of them. Do this with me, put your hands out like this and go, whoa, whoa, that's impulse control. 
So this is the part of the brain that is in charge of your impulse control. So let me ask you, sometime during the last 15 months, the COVID months, have you had the impulse to just knock the mess out of somebody? <laughs> and and you, can, you don't have to tell me who. In fact, I would prefer that you not tell me who because I might be one of them. But give me a thumbs up or a clap or whatever. If you've had the impulse, some it might be that person on TV who keeps talking about things. It might be the people out there on Facebook who keep, I'm not going to ask which side you're on, but who keep talking about things. Some of those people out there annoy you. It might be the people you live with. I can't stand it. If she, he does one more thing, you've had that impulse. But did you do it? Don't tell me if you did it because I don't want to be responsible for knowing but I'm guessing most of you are going to say, no, I didn't do it, right? So yes, yes, people are saying, thought it, thought it. Yes, yes, yes. But I'm guessing you didn't do it. And the reason you didn't do it is no matter how irritated Lisa might be with me when I don't submit my invoice and she's getting pressure from other people who say, we need to give her money. She's done work. We need, and so she sends me sweet little emails and say, you know, we really like to have your invoice. And then she said, no matter how frustrated and annoyed she gets with me, she may say, I'm going to slap her in the next week, like my mama used to say. But she's not going to actually hit me, even though she may think about it and want to, because she's got this. And every she gets annoyed, she gets frustrated, and she goes, whoa. So you get annoyed and frustrated with that person living with dementia. And you say, if I have to ask her one more time, I think I'm. if I have to ask him one more time, if he hits me one more time, I'm going to hit him back. You think those things, you feel those things, but do you do it? You don't do it. And the reason, unless you're really, really tired and you're really, really overwhelmed and we need to get you help if you're at that point, because you have that impulse control. Let's look at what happens to that person living with dementia. Do they have that impulse control not to hit you when it gets really, really hard? They don't have that ability. So they lose some of that ability to do that pullback, to do that impulse control. Let's talk about one more thing that this part of the brain does. Put your hand right here. Because this is something that y'all talked about. Something that y'all talked about was that just kind of impulsively doing stuff. Something else that y'all mentioned. Do this with me. Be logical. So this part of your brain has your ability to take lots of information, lots of details, perspectives, and be logical about it. You know that people aren't going to sit to you if you smell bad, right? People aren't going to sit next to you if you smell bad. You want people to sit next to you, so therefore you take care of your grooming and you don't go to your meeting smelling bad. Do this. So whereas before I said be logical, here it's be not happening. So if we go back and look at those parts of the brain, for people living with dementia, this part of their brain that helps them be logical and realize I need to shower, I need to go to the bathroom, I need to eat, I need to take the medicine. It, it, that part of their brain really isn't connecting or working anymore. And so what happens when often I try to explain things, it's like I'm taking my brain and I'm headbutting the person living with dementia. And I'm trying to say, behave and do right. And it's just not going to happen. So let's go back to where we left off with our PowerPoint. And let's start talking about some of these. So why did it happen? 
why did this moment, this thing happen? So it might be that the reason Matthew swung is exactly the thing that you're trying to help him with. So maybe he swung because he's hungry or he's thirsty or he needs to go to the bathroom and get rid of something. So his brain is getting a signal going, something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong. You're trying to help him with something's wrong, something's wrong, something's wrong, but his brain won't let him get that. Maybe it's pain or fatigue. Maybe he's being a human being who is in a culture that says, we don't, once you're past your early 20s, you don't go to the bathroom with groups of people anymore. And even when you were going to the bathroom with groups of people when you were in your teens or your 20s, you didn't open the stall and just go right there in front of them. So maybe it's really a privacy issue or is it something happening in the brain, some of this brain failure kind of stuff? Is it something about the relationship, something about how quickly we move and how our pace is, is our usual pace doesn't connect with that person living with dementia? Is it something that's because of the change in vision that the person sees or doesn't see? Or is it something about the words that we use? Do we seem bossy? Or is it too many words? So Lisa says, I really need to have your bill because you know when we don't get it, we can't get that in and it's too much. Or is it something about the situation? Is it something about the environment where there's too much going on and there's not enough going on or it's too loud or it's too quiet or it's too dark or it's too bright and noise? Or is it something about what we expect and what the person can do? Or is it something about this is familiar and I should be able to do it or it's unfamiliar and I can't quite get it. So I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to have you think about that for a minute, but we're actually going to go back and we're going to look at that Matthew. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I'm having some trouble sometimes with let me see, if I pull this up, so I'm going to look at Lisa now. Can you see the video? Are you still seeing the PowerPoint, Lisa? You can do thumbs up if it's a video, or you can it's tell. It's the video. It's the video. So yes. You should be saying the video. So I'm going to ask you to look at this one more time, this little clip without the hit. I'm going to ask you to look at it one more time, and I'm going to ask you to really think about what might be some of the whys that you might pick up on or going on as I approach Matthew. Hey, Matthew. Hey, Matthew. Hey. Oh, what, what? Okay. So take a moment. I'm going to stop sharing and just drop into the chat or you can even unmute and say it out loud. What might be some of the whys about why he hit me from behind or he swung at me from behind? And Invading his space. I'm sorry? Invading his space. Invading your space is something Ginger said. And then Denise and Sarah and Holly all put in some kind of variation of coming at him from behind, or he didn't know I was coming or approaching from the back and some of those kinds of things. Does that make a difference? Yes. Yeah, it really makes a difference. So um, Missy added in, some additional stuff. He looked like he was thinking intently and he was caught by surprise. So if we were in that situation, we turn it around, we think about, I'm caught. Have you ever been startled somewhere where somebody comes up and you, oh, 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 oh yeah, it's fine. I just wasn't expecting you. Um, I had someone um, reach over me at a restaurant 
and it startled it was a loud noisy restaurant it startled me so much i actually pop you know i actually hit her arm and what she was bringing over actually spilled a little bit and thankfully it was probably water not coffee so it didn't hurt anybody or burn anybody but that was just kind of the reflex so we're kind of starting to take apart now is it really aggression or or resistance or is it that something else kind of thing so i'm going to share with you one more time and i'm going to show you a variation so this is something that i call connect and it's kind of the uh, um um growth from or a different view of um what tipa snow calls um the positive approach um uh, ppa so positive physical approach i've done a little i like words so i i i did a little bit differently with it um, so the approach is, and this will be in your handouts, um, we, we don't get them to you ahead of time because to tell you the truth, I never exactly know what I'm going to talk about. So I never exactly know what to put in there. Um, but this will be in them when I send them to Lisa tonight. But it's come from the front. Open. I might ask Lisa to throw it into the chat. Um, come from the front. Open palm. Not too fast not in front, establish hand contact, change to hand under hand, and then take a seat or squat or kneel. So come from the front, open palm, not too fast, not in front, establish hand contact, change to hand under hand, take a seat or squat or kneel. So let's see what that looks like. So what did you notice I did already that was a little bit different? You can drop it into the chat or you can unmute and say it out loud. What did you notice? Holly says you knocked. I knocked. What's the benefit of knocking? What do you automatically look for when you hear a knock? You automatically do. The first thing is look and then you automatically it's kind of a it's a request so i knocked what was the other thing you noticed i did came from the front so i got in front of them and what difference does that make you're friendly it looks friendly it's not scaring him he can see me And, it, and you, and you notice, smiled. I'm smiling. Did you notice where he started looking for me? This is kind of cool. So look where he started looking for me. Where did he look for me? He started looking for me on the left. And the reason he does that is because we read from left to right. So he started looking on the left and then he scanned over and he found me. So it's not like he found me. It's like he found me. Let's see what happens in the rest. Hey. Okay. Hey. Oh, so what did you, how much talking did I do? Not much. And so, I could have been going up to him to give him his medicines, to take him to the bathroom, to take him to get cleaned up. But do I have to tell him then? Because if I tell him then, what's going to happen? Because right now, what I'm going for is to make a connection. We're walking, we're moving together. Just do this with me. And there's just something about moving together that kind of makes you like me a little bit. So we're walking together, he likes me, and then we're in a better position when we get to the bathroom, when we get to the, um, the bedroom, when we get to um, the kitchen, we're in a better, when we get to the dining room, we're in a better place 
to be successful in that ask. So I want to make that connection before I get to that ask. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to share my screen, but we're not going to look at the video this time. This time we're going to go back and we're going to look at the PowerPoint again. Because we've kind of talked about what happened. We've talked about Matthew needed to go to the bathroom. He'd been out on the porch for a long time. Something about his vision, something about his impulse control, um, something about our relationship and my pace that I might have been going too fast, something about me expecting him to be able to hear me say, Matthew, Matthew, and realize what was happening, something about a lot of these different things. And then we're going to take it apart and we're going to connect and understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about it from Matthew's perspective. I'm going to put together what happened, why I think it happened, and I'm going to change that approach in a way that can get us in a situation where things go better. So that was a fairly simple one. And the way I did a fairly simple one is because I could truthfully probably spend this hour with any one of you really pulling apart what your situation is. If it's bathing, bathing and showering early in dementia is really different from late in dementia. If it's taking medications, that's really different early in dementia versus late in dementia. But we've got some things that we can try instead. And we can do that by really beginning on focusing on what do we really have the ability to change? So I kind of have this funnel. I have three different things. I've got people living with dementia, uh, which is PLWD. I've got care partners, which is us, our communication, our approaches. And we've got the environment, which is everything else that's going on around. And so what do we really have the ability to change? And that's where I'm going to focus. So if I'm thinking about bathing and I'm thinking about the person living with dementia, can I make them not, not produce sweat and not produce urine and stool? That's not going to change. That, you know, that is part of life. That's part of being healthy. That's going to keep on going. You know, can I change what's going? So I can't change the physical. You know, can I change that person and convince them that they really didn't take a shower this morning? They really didn't take a shower for the last week. Can I convince them of that? Remind them of that? Can I take a picture of them with the newspaper in the shower? And it says May the 23rd. And that's the last time you I had a family do that. You know, every time the person got in the shower, they took a picture with the newspaper and then they would try to say, see, you haven't had a shower since June the 3rd. See, it, it doesn't work. It, 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 it's creative. So some of these things, you know, it's creative, um, but it's not really very helpful. So you can't convince that person living with dementia. You can't take away their dementia. I would love it if we could. So that means... I kind of have to change my focus from making that person do right and behave and making him or her stop to what can I do? How do I change? How do I change the environment? How can I change myself? So I start thinking about maybe I'm looking at this the wrong way. So maybe what I can do is I can change something about the medications. I would consider the medications environment here. So maybe what I can do is I can realize that maybe I can talk with the pharmacist, talk with the primary care provider and see if we can simplify those medicines. Maybe there's a way we can do those medicines through the skin instead of by swallowing. Maybe we can make those medicines compounded 
So there's only a couple of them instead of a whole bunch of them. Maybe some of those medicines we don't need anymore. Maybe we don't, maybe we um, can develop a pattern where we do those medicines with meal time. So it becomes predictable. Maybe we can do, so we come up with this strategy and we're going to try it. We're not going to try it once that's like, that didn't work. She didn't know what she was talking about. We're going to come up with a strategy and we're going to try it a couple of times. We're going to see what works and do what doesn't work. Kind of thinking creatively and thinking specifically about this person because the reason I might not be really comfortable taking a shower might be really different from the reason someone else might not be really comfortable taking a shower. So I want to really think about it from the perspective of that person. Think about some of those rules because we tend to have some rules that really don't need to be rules. We, we, we think that the only, that everybody needs to be dunked or sprinkled. Um, meaning everybody needs a shower or a tub bath. But the reality is a lot of people get really, really clean standing in front of a sink. And if you're clean, it counts. Being clean counts. So maybe we rethink, maybe we think we should sit down and have a meal together, but maybe what we really need to do are have some nice smoothies while we sit outside on the front porch. Some of these rules we need to get back rid of and think about what really is important and what's not important. So I'm gonna kind of give you this image. Now, some of you may have seen this before. It's usually done with dots, not with stars, but I was in a starful mood today, so I did it with stars. So I'm gonna give you some rules and I'm gonna get, let you Draw your dots or your stars like this on your paper. You're into dots or stars. And I'm gonna give you a minute to try to figure this out. So listen to the rules. The rules are, so everybody should have their, their stars or their dots drawn out. The rules are four straight lines, without picking up your writing utensil, connect all of your dots or your stars. So use four straight lines without picking up your pen or your pencil, your writing utensil, connect all of those nine darts. Four straight lines, not picking up your pencil, connect those four dots. And I'm gonna give you one minute to work on it. So your minute starts now. Melanie, you didn't tell us there would be a test. <laughs> it's some of y'all are it's the middle of the afternoon. You're ready for your nap. Some of y'all it's six o'clock in six, almost seven o'clock at night. You're ready for your supper. Some of y'all might be ready for your nap at supper time. <laughs> I don't know that you can do it. <laughs> you can do it. Four, and, huh? the solution, but I'm going to warn you before that I put the solution up because some of y'all are going to want to keep working on it. Four straight lines without picking up your pencil, connect all nine of the dots. And that's your timer. That was one minute. Some of y'all say that was the shortest minute ever. I think she, <laughs> I don't really think she gave us a minute. So and maybe that's how our people are feeling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm going to put up the answer. So I'm going to give, I'm going to go five, four, three, two, one, and then I'm going to put the answer up. And then I'm, and you'll have it in your, your PowerPoint when Lisa sends it out. So I'm gonna go five, four, three, two, one. I'm gonna put the answer up and then I'm gonna go five, four, three, two, one. And I'm gonna take the answer down. 
because some people might still want to work on it. So you ready? So if you don't want to see the answer, put your hands over your face or close your eyes. You can't cut off your camera because it's kind of like the ostrich putting their head in the sound. When you cut off your camera, we can't see you, but you can still see us. So that's not very helpful. So five, four, three, two, one. I'm putting up the answer now. So close your eyes if you don't want to see it. Oh, cool. Five, four, three, two, one. And I'm moving on. So you can open your eyes now if you didn't want to know the answer. So the take home for this is dementia isn't regular. And so the regular kinds of solutions, the regular kinds of approaches don't work. If it were easy, I, I, um, I was at a lecture at Duke and I wish I knew who the, woman, what the woman's name was who said this, because I love to give her credit. But she said, if it was easy, I would be thin and y'all would be well rested. Um, it, it's not easy. So these approaches to these challenging kinds of aggressive resistive, they won't do what I want them to do when I want them to do it or how I want them to do it or I need them to do it. Um, they're complicated and they're challenging and they're not easy. If they were, we would all know it. We would all know how to do it. So I'm gonna pause myself. We've got about five minutes left and I'm gonna see if anybody wants to ask a question, share their situation that's kind of disturbing and distressing them and, and see if we might can use some of these strategies to figure out what to try. So does anybody feel comfortable sharing their situation or giving us a situation we can try to figure out? Yes, Suzanne. So if you can unmute, we'll, we'll give it a try. So Suzanne, if you can unmute, we will listen for it. Sometimes it's kind of hard to figure that out. It looks like a microphone with a line through it. And it's usually, oh, there, there you go. Yes, I found it. <laughs> Yay. The particular situation that my husband has, he's in a memory care facility and he is, he is mid to late stage dementia. He is very aware that he is a man and everybody who is trying to bathe him or toilet him or dress him is a woman. And so he acts out because he thinks it's inappropriate that somebody other than me is working with him in, in what he considers to be a private situation. What? Okay. Okay. So that tells us that tells us some things about him, right? He's still aware of the people trying to help him. Um, and he realizes that these people ought not to be undressing him and doing to him what oh. they're doing to him. So there are a couple of things that we can do in that situation. And one of the things we can do in that situation is not be very girly during that situation. Because a lot of times what happens is when things are complicated, people go in the go, hey, I'm here to help you. And it's kind of girly. So people not being very girly, being very... Um, a little more matter of fact, a little more, um, I don't know what the right word for, but you know what I'm, I'm talking about. So being very, a little bit more serious. The other thing I do, and we might should plan to do one of these sessions sometimes is I'm probably going to use, and, and this is the hand under hand thing that we work on. I'm probably going to use 
his hand with my hand to do some of that care. And I'm probably going to help him not from in front of him, but I'm going to help him from beside him. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm standing right in front of him, then it's, it's really clear that I'm putting my hands on you and undressing you versus if I'm more beside him, it has more of that sense that he's doing it for himself. Huh. And so I have him in front of a mirror or I have him in front of the toilet or I have him in front of the shower and I'm to the side and his hand is with mine doing it. And that way it doesn't have that same experience from him for him as a woman is standing in front of him undressing. Um, you can, you can also do some things with gender neutral clothing. Now, one of the things scrubs and things like that often can be really gender neutral. And so if we think about things like not bending over um, and we think about things like staying to the side, it kind of neutralizes some of that visual kind of here are my, my woman parts you know, and it kind of can neutralize some of that. So those are some things that just off the top of my head, I might be willing to try, but, it, but being flexible, um, thinking outside the box and some of y'all, this will mean more to than others. Um, but some of you are going thinking outside the box is a good hint. Um, thinking outside the box with how are we going to make this work better for him? Um, so it might not be being pleased and thank you. It might just be it's time. Mm. And kind of taking, is that, does that sound like something you can pass on to them? Pass it on and see um, how that works. I mean, they do wear scrubs. Um, and I, I, sometimes he thinks that the women are men because they have very short hair, but he's still, he's still aggressive and combative when they're trying to help him do these things. So that's kind of a different issue. So that is more of, he doesn't want people doing things to yeah. him that he doesn't understand and gets what's going on. Yeah, there's two parts to it, yes. Yeah, and, and, and that's really common is there layers of these things. Um, so the hand under hand part and the being to the side part still helps because that way he feels, he, he knows where things are going. The other thing I do is I do a lot less talking when I'm working. Um, I was helping a guy in the bathroom the other day at work, not just random guys in the bathroom, <laughs> but at work, I was helping a guy in the bathroom and they said, you know, he pees all over the floor. Um, he, he pushes you when you're trying to help him. And, and so I said two words the whole time I was in there and it was step closer. You know, so I got him closer to the toilet, which was good. That really helped. And then I just pointed at the toilet. He saw the toilet. I then stepped out of the way. So he wasn't really paying any attention to me. I turned the water on. So he heard the water running. He emptied his bladder. He zipped up. And at that point, um, I, I said his name and pointed to the water running. He came over and washed his hands. It was a really weird soap dispenser. So I put the soap on my hand. He took it off of my hand and washed his hands, pointed back to the water. He rinsed his hands, handed him some paper towels. He dried his hands, opened the toilet. I mean, opened the trash can. He put the paper in there, pointed to the doorknob and he left. And so I think a lot of what they were doing is they were saying, okay, now, now, you know, you're supposed to do this. Now it's coming. And then don't go get closer. Now you're too far away. You're not, you're going to get it all over the floor. Don't get that far away. And, and so I think there was a lot going on that made him distressed and uncomfortable. And a lot of times what would happen is he would just leave, walk out of the bathroom and by, before he got to his chair, he'd wet all over himself. Um, it was just not comfortable. 
So it, it, that's the kind of thinking I'm talking about is not necessarily, there's no magic to it. The magic is really um, using this part of your brain to be able to see it from that perspective of that person living with dementia. The magic of it is yeah. um, being creative and willing to think out of the box. So thank you for sharing that example with this, Suzanne. I want to, to thank, give my thanks again to Lisa um, for inviting me, for sponsoring me. Um, I want to give thanks to um, all of you for being here, for participating, for being part of this. Um, and maybe what we can grow from this are send us some specific examples and, and maybe Lisa. we'll do some more specific things on YouTube or something. Um, but thank you for all being here and I hope you have a wonderful mm -hmm. afternoon or evening. Thank you so much, Melanie, for, for sharing your expertise and your wisdom with us. Um, if you do have specific questions that you would like to ask, please feel free, feel free to reply back to the email that you got the link uh. for the Zoom in. And that will come to me and I'll share that with Melanie. We will look at doing some further training. Uh, for specific examples, we will be sending out uh, probably in the next couple of days, all of the PowerPoint materials and the recording of this, you can watch it again. Yeah. Uh, so please look for that. And would you resend you the all. one from last week? Also, uh, it yes. got lost in my email. I can do that. Sure. I'd be oh, happy to. that'd yeah. be fabulous. Thank I you. Just chatted her that because I had been talking ginger. I know. So, I know. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Wonderful. We appreciate your time and being here. And please, if you do have specific questions, don't hesitate to email those to us and we'll see if we can help you out. And we hope to see you next Tuesday night where we talk about hallucinations and delusions. Thank and you all so much.